is really true. Today we're taking the Crystal Video Pro 300 Plus to Comic Con. Welcome to Cinegraph Studio, I'm Vladimir. I've wanted to test out a Pro Wireless Video Transmission Kit for a while now. So I said, hey, why not test the bigger brothers of the Swift 800, which I've already tested, right? Comic-Con was coming up and I got in touch with Zona IT as they were going to do a live coverage of the event using, amongst other things, the Pro 300 Plus. In this episode, we're talking about the specs, design and performance of the Pro 300 Plus and its shorter range brother, the Pro 200. We'll make a comparison of the two and we'll see where they shine and where they don't. Hit subscribe and the notifications bell to stay in touch with the latest gear videos, tutorials and more. And help us keep motivated to do more videos for you guys. Also hit us up on our newly launched Instagram page, where we'll be posting exclusive content as well. Thanks to all of you who subscribed so far, your feedback and support means a lot to us. The specs of the Crystal Video Pro 200 and Pro 300 Plus are quite similar except for the range and some design features. I'll be talking about the two as if they were one product and I'll point out the differences where they come up. Also, you get the same accessories in the box. First of all, let's see what stuff you get for your money. You get a hard case for both, which is great. At this price point, you should. And Crystal Video did a good job providing one. The cases are made of hard plastic and they seem sturdy enough for long-term use. Inside, you'll find a wireless video system protected by hard foam with all the accessories neatly packed into their own compartments. You get the transmitter, the receiver, seven antennas, well, that's how many you're supposed to get, but I was surprised to find some spares inside the box as well. Two power cables, Limo 2-pin to D-tap, so you can power the units with V-Log batteries, two SDI cables, a 12 volt 2 amp DC adapter with a 2 pin Limo connector, two hot shoe adapters and a V-mount adapter. So far, no difference. Design-wise, they are both made of aluminum and they look tough and built to last. You get an on-off switch and the cooler vent on one side. On the other side, we get the display with two indicator LEDs, the OK and the channel selection buttons, a mini USB port for updating the firmware, a HDMI port, one SDI plug, and the DC connector that can take between 7 and 36 volts. On the front, we find a quarter inch screw and three other screw holes for attaching the included V-mount adapter. On the back, we find the first major design difference, and it's a feature that can make or break your decision to buy one or the other because you have to factor in the extra cost of the batteries when you make your purchase. The Pro 200 has an NPF battery plate molded into the design of the kit so you can run it off of cheap NPF style batteries while the Pro 300 Plus has another quarter inch screw and three other screw holes for attaching a V-mount adapter. Even though theoretically you could run the Pro 300 Plus off of NPF style batteries using a device like this, it was shipped and intended to run off of V-log batteries. The Pro 300 Plus addresses a higher end market while the Pro 200 borrows this prosumer level feature from the Swift 800. On the top of the units we find the antenna screw plugs, two for the transmitters and five for the receivers, and finally on the bottom some exhaust vents and quarter inch threads. I really like the futuristic design of the Pro 200 system with the red inserts and the square edges, looks a bit like a Star Wars prop to me. And the receiver can look like the Iron Throne with the little stretch of the imagination. The Pro 300 Plus has rounded edges and the signature pink radiators on the top and bottom and it seems more compact than the Pro 200. Overall, both systems feel well built and ready to serve Pro requirements. Now let's talk performance. They both transmit up to 1080p resolution and 5 GHz frequency, so your system is less likely to be jammed by other devices. The Pro 200 has a 200 meter maximum range and the Pro 300 Plus 300 meters. Crystal Video provides schematics on how you should place the antennae of the transmitter according to your usage conditions. In ideal conditions, the plane created by the antennas of the transmitter should be parallel to the plane created by the antennas of the receiver. This would be the best case scenario where you get the best signal stability and the best range. Keep in mind that for best results, 
there should be no obstacles between the transmitter and the receiver. As it happens, you rarely find the ideal conditions, so Crystal Video have been thoughtful enough to include schematics on how to place the antennae of the transmitters for less than ideal conditions, especially when your camera is mobile, for example. The receiver also includes a feature called Enhanced Anti-Interference Mode. You activate this function by keeping OK pressed for a bit more than 3 seconds and you'll see an indicator flashing on the display. Unfortunately, I only found out about this feature after the fact, but the transmission quality was very good even without it. But you can always benefit from the extra bit of stability in rough conditions. Now, if you want to see the live feed from Comic-Con and see for yourself how the Pro 300 Plus handled, click the link above or the one in the description. Keep in mind the sheer amount of people and devices at this particular event. If it worked here, it should definitely work for your application as well. There were times when big physical objects were in the way and it did a great job with barely noticeable macro blocking. The other transmitter being used was rated at 1200 meters and costing twice as much and even it had some difficulty sending signals through the physical obstacles present. While you open a new tab to see those clips, I'll make a comparison of my own. I'll compare the Pro 200 and the Pro 300 Plus in equally difficult conditions, perhaps even worse. I'll make their jobs really hard. While the receivers at Comic-Con were placed high above the crowds, I've placed mine at camera level on a crowded street, lined with restaurants blasting radio signals, some of them transmitting on the 5 GHz frequency as well. Think laptops, phones, routers, and perhaps other stuff as well. Conclusion time! I think both the Pro 200 and the Pro 300 Plus are solid options for the price you pay. If you can afford the extra jumping costs, I would go for the Pro 300 Plus for the extra signal stability and range. But the Pro 200 is a perfectly good option for most scenarios. They are great for live transmissions, conferences, weddings, for sending video to client monitors, and because of the low latency, they are great for pulling focus remotely. Compared to other gear on the market with similar specs, these products from Crystal Video come at a better price as 
well. Thanks to Best Buy for the support and for providing this gear for testing. If you want to find out more about this product or you want me to test some gear you're interested in, please leave a comment below and let me know. Hit subscribe and the notifications bell to stay in touch with the latest episodes. Also, follow us on Instagram for exclusive content and updates. Thanks for watching! See you next time! Thank you.